Hello and welcome to Center Ice Cardcast, your one-stop podcast shop for all things hockey cards. My name is Eric Andrews, also known in the hobby as Hammerhawks, and I'm joined by my co-host and fellow hobbyist Aaron Goldstein, better known as Crease Collector. And since this episode is pretty much exclusively about a couple of new Upper Deck products, also joining us is the one and only Billy Celio of Upper Deck. Billy, thank you so much for joining us again. We are very glad to have you. Always a pleasure, guys. So we're just going to sort of break down 2021 Upper Deck Allure for the fans out there. Uh, Just to start things off, uh, we just wanted to um, talk about that. And uh, I'm just really glad that it's making a return after debuting last year. And um, I think it went really, really well. But what kind of prompted another release this season? We got a lot of positive feedback about uh, last year's Allure. And um, enough so that we couldn't ignore the fact that it was something that we should bring back and, and add to our stable of, uh, of products. You know, Chromium stock cards have been very popular as of the last couple of years. And I believe uh, Opeachy Platinum is really our only Chromium stock set. So, uh, you know, last year we wanted to kind of build another set, another set or two, along with uh, Stature to kind of give the audience what they were looking for. And I think it went well. I think we learned a few things and, uh, you know, did our best to in- improve on it this year. And as you've seen in the solicitation, we've we've already taken some of the stuff that we did in this year's and, and improved on it for 21-22. So, you know, it, it, I really feel Lure's got a home with Upper Deck, um, and I, I think a lot of people will like it. Very cool. That, that's exciting to hear, um, you know, that it ha- you know, ha- you have those long-term plans for the product. You know, you, you touched on... Uh, you know, hearing good things about the product last year and wanting to bring it back this year. What are some of the more notable cards that have returned this year from last year? One of the things we did was we we tried to stay, we tried to keep a number of the parallels in the set. So, you know, you'll see, you'll see, uh, you know, the reds, the purples, the greens, the orange slices, you know. Um, Last year, we had a lot of die cuts. I think we kind of, we cut back on die cuts a little bit. Um, but we still have it in there. there. There's, they look nice. So we wanted to still have them, but, you know, make them a little rare and not like you get a die cut every pack. So uh, hopefully, you know, can add some, some value to those cards. And then, you know, we've, we've got the SPs again this year with, uh, with 50 rookies and it has a number of parallels for that. We kept kind of the same form. We, we added some new inserts. I know iced out is back again. I really liked how it uh, came out the first year. We brought that back. We brought back the uh, Allure Quartz. Those cards were really popular. So we brought a few back and and we added a few new ones also. Nice. That sounds very, very exciting. Um, Could you walk us through um, just some of the new content uh, that's featured this year? We do have some new parallels in the product, some uh, announced, some unannounced. And, uh, you know, so it adds to, to people's quote unquote rainbows. Um, it also has some kind of cool looking backgrounds. You know, we did the NHL shields. And one of the things uh, that we wanted to do this year is really kind of buff up the uh, the retail and the blasters. So, you know, they have their own specific SKUs in the set that look really nice. And, um, you know, we, we've got a few new inserts. Uh, the diagnostics one with like little thumbprint was was kind of cool. And uh, my, my favorite name uh, for the set, the... City Sellies, which kind of gives you the nice city background and the and the player, you know, having just scored a goal, celebrating. Uh, those came out really nice. And it, it kind of reminds me of the old MVP NHL territories, but we kind of changed the pictures up and added some fireworks to the card. Absolutely. Yeah, that's an insert that definitely stuck out to me as well. You know, and of course, you mentioned that, you know, is potentially your favorite thing about the product. But um, what are some other things that that stick out to you about the product? I just got a few boxes to open up uh, before we started talking. And, you know, I, I think some of the uh, some of the colors really pop on the cards. They look real nice. And, and the designs that we use for the uh, and the patterns that we use on the cards. And then, uh, you know, there's 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 a lot of there's a lot of color per pack. And that's that's one thing I thought that was missing last year. You know, I, I'm not a big fan of, you know, opening up a pack and maybe one out of five, you, you see a color, especially in this Chrome stock, especially, you know, you want to see some bright cards. So, you know, you're going to open up an eight card pack, which I believe is different than last year. It's, it's a, it's a bigger pack of cards and you're going to see, 
you know, right off the bat, there's a, uh, an SP rookie card, a, a blue SP rookie card in every pack. And then you're going to see some other colors uh, within the, each pack. So you're not just opening up a pack of silver cards. You're opening up a pack of, you know, color. And, and that kind of gets the gets the, the people excited. That's awesome. Yeah. Like I noticed, um, I don't know if I'd call it a trend, but definitely I think, and I think it's great for the hobby. A lot of people kind of um, going toward not so much um, autographed or memorabilia cards, but more so like that renewed um, love for those, you know, shiny cards that kind of mimic those from the 90s. So definitely cool to see um, this product obviously stand out um, in that way. Just for a little bit of a fun question here. Um, are there any, I guess, secrets that you could uh, let us in on about this product? I can let you in on one. And one. the reason okay. I you in on it is because it got solicited because it was supposed to be a secret. <laughs> But uh, somebody forgot to uh, check everything, and it's it slipped through the cracks. The uh, the blue china parallel, actually inspired by one of my friends who still has you know those blue china plates that they put up as decorations and stuff. You'll see them at your grandmother's house, and I, I make fun of them all the time. And so I I told him I'm like, and there there's a lot of collectability of those things. Like there are collectors that collect that kind of that kind of china, and. Um, I told them, I'm like, I'm going to make an insert out of that for you in the set. And, you know, they're, they're, they're very rare. They're extremely rare. And it's just kind of cool, like that design on a trading card. I never thought I would see that. Um, but there are a few other Easter eggs that I can't necessarily discuss. There might be uh, a photo variation or two, but um, we didn't hide too much this year. This year has been kind of interesting. And I, I'm kind of steering a little bit away from the original question. For those of the no, like Allure was expected to be out much sooner than it is right now. And a lot of people will notice that, you know, the rookie checklist is very similar to series one, where it had a lot of holdovers and uh, bubble players and whatnot. And that's kind of what we were expecting to have to deal with. And our vendors are so backed up right now, you know, printing for ourselves and other companies that it just took a lot longer to finally get this stuff on the presses and to get it going. But, you know, you had to be ready at a drop of a hat to give them the designs, to give them, you know, everything. So it's not like we could add more players. I mean, we, we did the best we could to add newer rookies and, and content, but, you know, it, it was very difficult to uh, build the set initially one way, and then it's coming out so much later a different way. So that's something about this Allure set that people might not understand. Yeah, no, I think a lot of people have had those questions and um, we're not going to get into it too much on this episode for sure, but um, it's good to see that explanation. I mean, I, I think there's a lot obviously that goes into, um, you know, producing these cards and obviously with COVID kind of mess everything up. And, it's to, you know, I, I do thank you for that explanation because obviously it is important to get that information out there so that more people can, you know, can understand that side of it, you know. And if, if you notice, the original solicitation had like XRC cards. And it was one of those things where you, you, we have the redemption cards for the XRCs and we just, the, the players had already played so we could create the, the, re, the redeemed cards. And so we decided to put those cards into the product instead of XRCs. You know, I mean, you talked about it there, but I think something that just so many people in the hobby don't understand, and, you know, we, we've talked about this before, but, you know, since you brought it up, you know, you guys don't print in house, you know, it's such a big limitation that the majority of the people in the hobby are, you know, unaware of. So I'm glad that you touched on that. I think that's really all that we have about Allure, but is there anything else that you want to add about the product? As I said, I've opened up a few boxes already. I'm seeing lots of color. I'm seeing gorgeous looking cards. So, uh, you know, I'm really excited about it. And uh, as I said, you, you already saw the solicitation for next year. So that's going to be amazing also. Yeah, that's very true. I mean, I, I mentioned this to you earlier this week, Billy, but those, I forget what you guys call them, but the, the parallels were they're kind of a sequence that create a rainbow when they're put all together. I, I love that idea. Those are the I'm, coolest things. I yeah. don't think that's been done before in hockey. I want to say it's been done in like baseball, I want to say. I would, but, be, I would be shocked if it hasn't been done before, but I can't recall it. Was really it. Cool. Like, I can't recall it being done as of late or recently in, in, in I hockey? I think it was like, like definitely not in hockey, but, but I want to say there was some random baseball set from, you know, late nineties that had some similar thing, but I, you know, I can't recall. It definitely wasn't like 
upper deck did. And, and so that is going to be amazing to see. Um, well, like, like definitely not to this quality is what I'm saying. It's, it's amazing. The other thing is I wanted to make it attainable. There's so many people that like mm -hmm. to collect the rainbows. If you don't get that one-on-one, -on -one, you're screwed. If mm -hmm. you don't get the one, I mean, there's only yeah. five. I mean, we can play math games here, but the rarest one is numbered out of 199. So there's potentially 199 rainbows out there, which lets more collectors have the fun of chasing that rainbow and not just waiting for those big, you know, not just letting the, the big time spenders be able to do that. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I love that. That That's going to be something to definitely look forward to next year. So yeah, I was really, really glad when I saw that because I love the idea. You know, and then turning to kind of our main topic for the episode, that being 2020-21 Upper Deck Skybox Metal Universe, uh, which, you know, thus far has obviously attracted all sorts of attention. And of course, the roots of the product are pretty well documented, though that's primarily in other sports like basketball. So can you just share a little bit about why Metal Universe was created for hockey this season and kind of what the motivation was for doing it? We've been hearing it for a while that uh, we needed to bring back Metal Universe. And um, we waited for a little bit. And then the card boom during COVID just, and you saw the popularity of PMGs, you saw the popularity of Jambalayas and Platinum Portraits and cards like that. And it, it was just, we couldn't ignore it any longer. And not only did we not ignore it any longer, but I think we've, we've really stepped up our game to, to get it out there for as many people as possible. Not only do we have it for hockey, and I know we're talking about hockey, but there's you know a Metal Universe champions coming out here, which is going to be absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Like imagine all those Jordan, LeBron, PMGs that people have been waiting for. You know, we had a, a, a football set go out on, on EPAC with eight of the top prospects. You know, we, so imagine you get PMGs at the top, football prospects we've been getting a lot of the top basketball prospects as of late and uh, so i'm excited for that and having arena designs you know making designs for for some of these sets is is amazing also they, they do such a good job so we did the first one kind of in-house uh hockey is is completely you know upper deck we hadn't started using the arena design group yet but there's just so much nostalgia to the set and it, it was it was time to bring it back uh, and this was just such a good time to bring it back to. And again, it was one of those products that probably could have come out a little bit late or earlier. I mean, I know there's many delays that people, uh, you know, the, the release date kept changing on everybody. And I apologize for that. But again, it's just it's a matter of our vendors being able to find the time to print this stuff. So but from a standpoint of was it time? Yeah, it definitely was time to bring it back. And, and I'm really excited with what we did, what we did with it. Nice. Um, could you just walk us through just some of the inspiration behind um, these really nostalgic insert sets? Basically, there there's so many. If you if you just do a eBay search of Metal Universe and inserts and stuff, there's so many just nostalgic Michael Jordan inserts and uh, LeBron and all, all these guys that have these amazing inserts. Whether it was from the retro set that we did or whether it was from like the original sets. So picking which ones to use is, was, was definitely um, a challenge. And I, I believe uh, Chris mentioned something that, you know, this might be something that we bring back. So, you know, we didn't necessarily want to, to use all of the inserts year one because there's so many of them. And if we threw everything at once, it, I, I think uh, it would make the next set a little bit tougher. So, you know, we, we kind of, we, we simplified it. We found some ones that we really liked and, you know, we, we replicated some of those inserts. And if you notice, they might be the same designs, but they're not all the same technology. The stuff that was normally printed like on C2S, like the Intimidation Nation was actually printed on Rainbow Foil Board this year, uh, and which kind of added a little bit extra flash to it. So um, we did want to take some of the, you know, original designs and some of them stayed exactly the same, but some of them we, we vamped up a little bit also. You know, and you just touched on a little bit about the design process there, but, um, you know, with obviously some of those designs pretty much being exact, exact replicas of the original designs, um, you know, maybe that aspect was a little bit easier, but, you know, kind of what was the design process like for some of those other inserts that you did tweak and try to make a, you know, a little bit more modern, whether it be the look or the feel or whatever it might be? 
I'll give you an example for one. Uh, we had a, the insert net, the net deposits. I'm like, this is kind of a fun name. Like we wanted to come up with some fun names for the inserts also, because that's one thing that Metal Universe is known for also, is just kind of like the very original names and inserts. And so we, we had the net deposits and I, I kept getting designs back from my designer and I'm just like, ah, I'm, I'm just not feeling it. And she's like, well, I've got this really crazy idea. And I'm like, that's probably what we're going to, I'm like, let me see it. And so the next next day I get this design and, and it's almost exactly what you see on the paper. She's just like, I kind of, and I'm like, this is perfect. This is exactly like what we're looking for from, you know, a metal universe type of insert. And I thought she, I thought she did an amazing job and uh, some other ones, um, you know, the, the Allon, which people are like, what is that? For those of you who don't know, that is, that is uh, it stands for, and I I'm drawing a blank. I had it now somewhere. But it is the it's it's the abbreviation for the uh, the only clear metal. So there's a metal out there that's clear, and um, that is that is what it is. I'm like I want to make an acetate card, but this is a metal universe. I go, can I somehow find you know them together? And I found I found the one clear metal, and so we made an insert out of it. And so what you see in the back of that card is the molecular structure of of that actual uh, of Allon, and then. Like alloyance, um, I've I've had to teach people how to pronounce that because they couldn't. It's like you got alloy, you got alliance. You know, just trying to sit there, brainstorm, and think of like terms that deal with metal, terms that deal with you know space, and terms that deal with with hockey, and figuring out ways to kind of combine them all. That was kind of a fun process, and uh, you know that's where alloyance came from. And again, our once our design team got that net net deposits figured out and like what we're looking for, it, it was it was smooth sailing from there. We kind of we were on the same page of what we were looking for from a design standpoint. Nice. It's always cool to hear kind of the behind the scenes story of kind of how a you know card comes to life, especially from that design perspective. It's it's really cool to see you like kind of push for a little bit more and kind of get what you want with a card before obviously creating it and releasing it to collectors. Always really, really cool. Um, just another insert that's that's making its debut in hockey is the um, Platinum Portrait Set. Um, if there's anything that you can tell us about that uh, specifically, um, we kind of just wanted to know like what makes those cards uh, so unique. Well, one, they're extremely rare, uh, as you guys can tell by the, by the ratios, but the reason why they're so rare is it takes quite a bit of time just to make one card. Like they're made, like, it's not like a sheet of cards that are made and run through a press. These cards are individually made and, and take like 10 to 30 minutes or something crazy like that to make each individual card. So wow. you know, we can't sit there and, and make thousands and thousands of them, nor did we want to. You know, there's so many rare inserts in Metal Universe. We, we didn't want to, you know, there, there's going to be some regular inserts that there's a lot of them, but we wanted to make sure that the rare inserts stayed rare no matter what. So, and those, that's one of them. But, you know, the fact that each one of those, it's like little laser, little laser holes that make each one of those, those cards. And there's hundreds of them in there to make the, you know, the face of the, of the player. Those are just some of the coolest looking cards, like just, hard to replicate that like if anyone there's a security sticker on on there but if someone wants to try to make those cards on their own good luck you know that's awesome yeah i mean they're just I, I would love to see one in person hopefully i get one tonight but yeah i mean they're just such a an interesting you know card you don't see things like that every day for sure so definitely really cool there you know and of course one of the biggest draws of the product is those precious metal gems cards like you said at the top um, you know, and everyone knew that the, that would pretty much be the highlight of the product. But, you know, even since release, the demand and the hype for those cards in particular have just been huge. So, you know, in your opinion, what makes the PMGs so significant and has the attention on them surprised you? It hasn't really surprised me because people have been begging for PMGs for, for quite some time. You know, I believe we put them in, in older products like Fleer Showcase, but they haven't been in a metal universe product in, in a number of years. And I think again, with the sales that you've been seeing in the secondary market of, of vintage PMGs, I think that's a big reason why people are excited about, you know, these PMGs. And I know there was, 
you know, so people were, I don't want to say questioning the checklist, but they wanted to see all the, you know, retired guys having PMGs and all that stuff. And, you know, this is, this is the first chance for a lot of players to have their first PMG. You know, we're not just going to continually make Wayne Gretzky PMG, Wayne Gretzky PMG. You know, uh, we wanted to give the modern day player active stars their, their first PMGs. So, that's uh, that's kind of the reasoning behind the checklist for that, and the reason why there's not, you know, legends in the set. We wanted to make a metal universe set that didn't rely on. This isn't this isn't retro. This isn't Fleer retro. This is metal universe 2021, and you know we wanted 2021 players in there. And again, we we like to keep our legends for for bigger sets. You know, we feel that's where they that's where they belong. And so maybe you'll see some in metal universe champions. But uh, for Metal Universe, you know, we wanted to have active players in the set. But they, they look, they, they're gorgeous looking cards. And, and that's, that's why they're so popular. They, they're just beautiful looking cards, you know, and they're off the base set. And I think, and I, I can't give my design team enough props. I think that the, the, base, the base set design are some of the nicest designs that any of my products have been built with. Like I immediately was drawn to the base cards. And how, how often does that happen? How often do you actually spend the time to look at the base cards before you just kind of flip to the middle of the pack and try to see what insert you got? I was looking at the base cards. I was looking at the designs of the base cards and, and the, the backgrounds of the base cards and all that stuff. And they did they did an amazing job on creating those cards. And then it just it just made it even better that we were able to make PMGs using that amazing design. Yeah, the designs are awesome. Just just pure classics. The PNGs are really, really cool. It's always really cool to see that stuff come to light once again. Um, another cool insert set that I really enjoy is um, the Intimidation Nation set, um, you know, that features obviously the goalies uh, and their masks. Um, what can you tell us, if anything, about those cards that we might not already know or just kind of went into that? Well, these aren't mask cards. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you okay. that. They're, they're not mass cards because we can't really highlight the artwork Makes of, sense, yeah. of the of the goalies. And, and you'll notice you, you don't see like the side view. And right. The, that makes sense. But people still want to see like close up images of the goalie. And I'm just like, well, you know, who's potentially the most intimidating person on the ice? You know, uh, it's usually the goalie, you know, and, and a lot of times you see them with eyes wide open, just staring kind of like Vasilevsky. <laughs> it's the folk. It's the focus. There, there's a few of them that came out that you're like, man, they're really focused or they're looking at something else. But it's really like they're 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 focused. And I'm like, this would be a perfect opportunity to to get that like close up goalie face uh, on a card. And, you know, it's it's not just the mask. It's it's the goalie and it's it's the, uh, you know, the facial expression and and all that. And, yeah, you, you see some of the mask, too, and it's a close up of it and people like it. But. It's, it's really focused on the goalies and people do like their goalie inserts every, every once in a while, I'll, I'll specifically try to, to create goalie inserts, like the, the stonewalled insert that we, that we had in, in UD one, one year. Uh, that's another one that's just completely goalies. You know, those goalie collectors, I'm telling you, they're, uh, they're crazy. They're pretty folk. weird. Yeah. They are. <laughs> and what's interesting too, you know, is this entire time talking about metal universe, we haven't mentioned an autograph one time. You know, and there's good reason for that, you know, because the product is driven by those inserts, you know, so kind of going along with that idea, why do you think it's important to have products like this, where the focus isn't on autographs or memorabilia or, you know, whatever it might be, it's, it's on the inserts. Why is that important? First, it's important for inventory reasons, um, not the most important, but we only get a certain amount of jerseys. We only get a certain number of autographs and stuff. And so it's important as a, as a card creator to, to come up with concepts and to come up with, uh, you know, cards and designs that aren't dependent on autographs that aren't dependent on memorabilia. Um, yeah. The, you're, we're not talking about autographs and there's no memorabilia in the set either. And it's, it's just to be able to create something with value on a two and a half by three and a half card is, is important. And you do that a number of different ways, either have a really cool looking insert, build a set. And when I say set, like there's going to be people that want to collect all of the jambalaya cards or all of the net crasher cards. So build an intriguing set. Don't build like a 10 card insert that necessarily, um, you know, you can complete 
buying two boxes of cards. And then an another way to create value is through scarcity and ratios and numbering. And you see a lot of people collecting, wanting to collect low number cards. You see a lot of people wanting to collect those one per case cards or, you know, maybe one or two per case or maybe one per five or six cases. You know, you can add value to cards that way. And that's one thing that's great with Metal Universe is you can create all these really cool inserts. And as I said earlier, some of them can be pretty common, but some of them you can add a lot of value by making them extremely rare. And those cards are worth more than autographs a lot of times. If you sit there and just flood it with auto after auto after auto, those autos become pretty common and people will be searching for those rare inserts instead of the autographs. So this set's perfect to be able to do that. A set that's known for its inserts is perfect to kind of cut back on the auto content and the memorabilia content and just give them some really cool cards, some really cool sets and some really rare cards. That's awesome to hear. Um, I think it's, again, I think I mentioned it earlier, but it's a really cool thing to see, you know, especially as someone who didn't really grow up in, you know, this era of cards, um, you know, 90s kid, right? So, um, you know, seeing a, re a return to that is really, really cool. And seeing a product like this come full circle is awesome. That's all we have for Metal Universe. But is there anything else that we should know about Universe? Or um, just kind of mention your favorite thing about Metal Universe? First off, I believe in, in a week or two, we got Allure this, this week. Uh, it's coming out. And then we've got uh, Opeachy Platinum comes out in a week or two also. So you, we're throwing all of our Chrome at you at once. But I, I, I'm really excited about Metal Universe. I'm very happy with the feedback that I've gotten. Because these aren't cheap boxes. Uh, I, I've seen what the secondary market has done to these, to these boxes. And they're not cheap. And I still see people happy with the results of what they're getting. So that was the initial, like, I was worried, you know, at the, at the secondary market prices, are people going to be happy and content with the, with the product? And, and I've heard a lot of positive feedback from people that have opened up a box or a case or some blasters or whatnot. So I'm very happy about that. Um, I'm excited to see what we can do with these, this product in the future also. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's so much, you know, about the product to be excited about. And with that, um, a little shout out to Chris Carlin over there at Upper Deck. He was kind enough to send us a little care package um, with some really sweet Upper Deck stickers, by the way, in case people didn't see those on our social media, um, as well as, of course, a box of uh, Skybox Metal Universe for us to open up on the show. So I'm going to get to that. And while I'm opening it up, Billy, I know that uh, you also want to touch on another little thing about the PMGs. Yeah, I can't believe we forgot to mention it. First of all, there's uh, the numbering. We stuck with the traditional numbering where the first 10 cards are the green. One out of 100 through 10 out of 100 are the green PMGs. Cards 11 out of 100 through 100 out of 100 are the red PMGs. So there's 90 red PMGs. And there's uh, 10 green PMGs. And you'd be like, wow, Billy, that's, that's awesome. That's enough. But no, <laughs> we decided this year to add a, a special little uh, 101 gold parallel uh, PMG uh, this year. So it's not number one out of 100. It is, which would have been pretty cool too. But it is, uh, it is one of one. Uh, so, and the cards look great. They're uh, you know, really shiny, really bright. And I hope you pull one in, in this box because it'll just prove that we only send the good boxes to people that have us on their shows. I'm totally joking. <laughs> well, we'll I mean, see what happens. Yeah. I mean, hopefully it pulls one. They are amazing cards. Just amazing. As soon as I saw the announcement of one and, and the product launched, I quickly went to eBay and it's like, all right, I just need to see one of these guys. And then it wasn't on eBay. It, it was on uh, someone else's personal break that I saw that they pulled a, a, a gold PMG. I believe it was the Aho and it was just, it was unbelievable. So kudos to you guys for, you know, for thinking of that and creating such an amazing card. Just awesome. Yeah. The, uh, one of the Jacob Slavin gold PMG one of ones has actually been pulled, but a little bit out of my price range at this time. So hopefully the guy will come down a little bit, but yeah, they're awesome cards, no doubt. Um, so first pack here, for those who don't know, the, the boxes are 15 packs per box with seven cards per pack. So 
I will just quickly try to go through um, all the cards. I'll mention some of the more notable base cards as well. So first pack, and like you said, Billy, the design on these is just phenomenal. They just really pop in person. Like you said, it definitely makes you want to stop and look twice at them and, and really admire them for what they are. So definitely kudos to you guys on that. Oh yeah, first pack, look at that. Nicholas Jalmerson base card. Love that. That's what you want. There's the, right. there's the there's the box hit right there. That's I mean, right. I That's the I case you can just Take all the packs and um, ship them to someone else. I mean, I think, <laughs> I think you made out a winner right now. I did. <laughs> so the hit of the first pack, we have a 97-98 Metal Universe Purple numbered 156 out of 199 of Liam Foodie. Nice. Those cards look awesome. Yeah. Wow. My the purple. Colors, those are just so cool. The purple is awesome. I love how those look. And purple is my favorite color. So that worked nicely. And then a Connor McMichael rookie card as well. And Billy, while I'm opening the next pack, do you just want to talk about the breakdown of the base set and how the numbering kind of works with that as far as the short prints? Well, first, I wanted to do the Saturday Night Live skit where they're like, colors that end in purple. <laughs> what is light purple? Um, you're such a big purple fan. The base set, so you've got your regular base set cards. You also have, um, there's rookies and there's, there's all-stars. And those are, those are shorter print cards in the set. So those are, those are a little bit rare, but it, it, it gives you an opportunity to, you know, get some of those superstars a couple times. It also gives you an opportunity when you're building a set, you know, you can have an all, like there's two teams, there's teams that have like two all-stars on it. Mm -hmm. So it gives you opportunity if there's not enough room to, to have all the players in it. Well, maybe one guy gets an all-star card and one guy gets a, you know, a base set card mm -hmm. because I know, I know a lot of people out there like variety and, and it's tough sometimes to, to get variety when there's only, you know, a hundred base cards in there. So that's some of the additional content that we added is, is those short prints. Yeah, those for sure. Usually, those will usually show up at the, at the, at the end of the pack. Correct. So in this pack, uh, notable base card, we got Carey Price, David Pasternak. The rookie card is Alex Romanov for the Montreal Canadiens. And then the hit, we got our autograph. And you guys might accuse the box of being rigged. It's a rookie <coughs> auto for the Chicago Blackhawks, Ian Mitchell. Nice. Nothing I'm certainly happy about that. Chicago I thought Blackhawks. you were going to get like, right, something or like, somebody. yeah, like, yeah. What? yeah. Oh. <laughs> Still, I mean, for you, it's a good hit, personally. Yeah. I will certainly take that, for sure. I've got a few nice Ian Mitchell cards in my collection. So I'm like David, but... Yeah. No, it's not, but, you know. Um, all right, third pack. Let's see, we've got Miko Rantanen, Alex Barkov. We've got our first net deposits. These are really cool looking in person. Um, it is of Mark Shifley for the Winnipeg Jets really cool it's almost like the the rainbow effect is almost not noticeable if you look at it straight on but then as soon as you move it then it really is apparent so that's pretty cool i like that moving on to the fourth pack see here mark stone for the vegas golden knights alex to for the blackhawks and we've got our first skybox premium prospects of anthony angelo for the pittsburgh penguins as well as an Oli ulevi rookie card Fifth pack. Yeah, I really am impressed with the base cards, really. They do look extremely nice in person, as you said. Um, next pack here, we've got, there's a Connor McDavid base card. Nice looking card. John Tavares. And we've got one of those Alloyance cards. It's a good, probably one of the better better pairings that there is in the checklist for the Pittsburgh Penguins, Sidney Crosby, and Evgeny Malkin. Nice. Definitely a good one. Really cool card. Again, it kind of has that same effect as the net deposits where if you look at it straight on, you can't necessarily see the rainbow, but as soon as you move it, then it really pops. So that's really cool. And then a rookie of Timothy Liljegren as well on to pack number six. Got a good rookie on the back. Aaron, I know you'll appreciate this one, a base of Mackenzie Blackwood. I mean, yeah, he's a good guy, you know, like watched him play a bunch. So yeah, big fan. Artemi Panarin, Andre Vasilevsky, and we've got a premium prospects, Lucas Carlson. And then the rookie, this is a good one, Ilya Sorokin for the Islanders. Pretty good name there. It's a pack number seven. Got a nice all-star card on the back. I'll come back to. 
got Elias Patterson, and we've got a 9798 Metal Universe insert. Really cool design in the background on this one in particular of Mark Shifley. Nice. Those cards look awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> Putting the universe in Metal Universe. That's so cool. Absolutely. So then we've got a rookie of Nils Hoglander and an all-star of Connor McDavid. Um, pack number eight. There's a good, another good rookie on the back. Happy with that one. Let's see here. Tuka Rask, Jake Gensel, the newest Blackhawk, Seth Jones, and a net deposit of Alex Barkov. Cool card. And the rookie for the pack. I think Billy jinxed it earlier. Tim Stutzel. Hey, not bad, not bad. <laughs> Jinx, that's a good one. That is a good one. Absolutely a good one for sure. Pack number nine, Svechnikov, Aho, and there we go. That's a nice one. 97-98 Metal Universe insert, Connor McDavid. Nice. Another really nice, awesome. nice design in the background. Really cool card. Yeah, that's awesome. Pack number 10. Patrick Kane, love that. Igor Shosturkin, and we have our first Intimidation Nation for you, Aaron, for the Florida Panthers, Sergei Bobrovsky. Nice. I like. I know he said a tough go, but it's a really nice looking card. Yeah, really, really nice. Super, so cool. super cool. Love that. And to go with my Ian Mitchell autograph, I now have an Ian Mitchell rookie card. Love that. On to pack number 11. So this is the final stack. So I've, I've been going left, right. So I'm on to the right column now at this point. We've got the Seattle Kraken's newest goalie, Philip Grubauer, Nathan McKinnon, Drew Doughty. And we've got another 97-98 Metal Universe, Sebastian Ajo, rookie of Nikolai Kanijov for the San Jose Sharks. Pack number 12. Getting down to it and no PMG yet. So we'll see if we see if we get one here. Soon, hopefully. Sydney Crosby base card. Looks like we've got our acetate hit here. Got Jack Eichel and a huge hit, Ryan Dezingle base card. Straight into the PC. <laughs> Teasing with you with, you, with, <laughs> with your guys there. It's just <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> and we've got a Dylan Cousins rookie cards. So that's a good one as well. And then we have our acetate insert, which you get one acetate insert per box. It's one of the, the more scarce ones. It's a hardware uh, for the St. Louis Blues, Ryan O'Reilly. And that's, that's one of those cards, like it, the hardware champions that, uh, you know, used to be an insert, but we put it on acetate and uh, Amazing. made it look a little, uh, made it a little different, but the same, but different. Yeah, looks super, nice. super cool looking card. And it kind of has like a, a shadow of the same photo in the background too, which is a nice touch. So on to pack number 13, Pekka Rene, Matt Barzell, Matt Kachuk. And we've got a net deposits of Max Pacioretty and a rookie of Igor Sharangovich for the Devils. Two packs left, pack 14. You're great with all these like name pronunciations. I would butcher all these guys. <laughs> You know, like, like I know hockey, but I would still butcher all these guys. Like, you're doing really well. Some of them are pretty tough. <laughs> got Nikita Kucherov, Quinn Hughes. We've got another uh, premium prospects. <laughs> this is kind of like the, the Billy Eric card. It's a premium prospects, like I said, for the Chicago Blackhawks, but pictured with the Detroit Red Wings, Alec Regula, and a rookie of Thomas Harley. So on to our final pack. Let's see yeah. if, if there's a PMG. Still a really good box. If not, though, a lot of good inserts and some good names within those inserts. Let's see what we get. Stam Coast, Jonathan Druin, Brent Burns, Bo Horvat. And we've got our second Intimidation Nation for the Edmonton Oilers, Miko Koskinen. Very and cool box. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tons of cool inserts. I, I think my favorite is probably that McDavid Metal Universe, even though it's just the basic version. It's just cool to get that card of McDavid. So that's probably my favorite card in the box, though there are certainly some other really nice ones as well. What stood out to you guys about that box? 
Um, all the cards look awesome. Kudos to Billy. Um, great job. Like every card is, 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 is stunning. You know, it's just a really well-designed product. And um, yeah, I think it's one that, I mean, I have heard some feedback so far, but it's one that collectors like across the board, they're like, this is great looking stuff. And I would have to agree. For sure. Billy, anything stand out to you? I think those purple, the, the purple parallel looks gorgeous. And you guys have pretty much said everything about every insert. So there's, there's not much left to say. I'm, I'm glad you got cool. some uh, PC guys in there, hopefully. And uh, again, thank you for having us on here and giving us the opportunity to talk to you guys about, uh, about our products. Absolutely. Anytime. We're always uh, really grateful for your time and, and glad to have your insight. So thank you again for joining us. And uh, I'm sure we'll talk to you soon. Sounds great, guys. Have a good one. That was an awesome box break. I love seeing the variety of different cards. Um, I love the throwbacks. Those, uh, you know, purple parallels are so cool. Just an all around really cool box break. Um, I think it's, it's something different that I think a lot of collectors haven't seen before, especially if they're new to the hobby. It's going to be something that really, like I think in a good way, kind of just draws them in. Like, you know, a product that doesn't have, you know, your your big flashy memorabilia pieces or anything like that. Not too many autos. Like I know they are, you know, especially for the big players, pretty scarce. So it's definitely a product that is built different, but it's it's very, very nice. And I hope we see a trend towards this um, moving forward in the hobby, but that's another big discussion. Um, anyway, regardless, we just want to let you guys know that we are going to add to our current giveaway that we are currently hosting. Um, you can see it on uh, Twitter, on Instagram as well. Stay tuned for our uh, social media posts as well. And we're probably going to publish it around episode 43. So keep out for that. And um, we'll be sure to update you along the way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the, the stuff that I got at the national to give away is, you know, nice in its own right. But, you know, having gotten this, this box uh, from Upper Deck, um, you know, for the show, obviously we want to share some of this stuff with you guys. So we'll be, we'll be posting something about, you know, some revisions to the, to the contest and, and get this stuff in there. Not sure entirely what all will be included, but there'll definitely be a, a nice little assortment of stuff for sure. Um, definitely some inserts, maybe throw in some rookies and stuff like that. But yeah, definitely want to be able to share that with you guys since Upper Deck was kind enough to share it with us in the first place. Just so you guys know, um, the Expo did announce their plans uh, here in Toronto. They're going to be uh, four days um, from November 11th to the 14th. Um, I did buy my tickets. I will be attending on the 13th and the 14th. So that's the Saturday and Sunday in November. And so hopefully um, I'll see some of you guys there. And uh, definitely feel free to connect and you could... Uh, buy your tickets and all that good stuff. And uh, hopefully there's one, I know in Toronto with COVID and everything, uh, it's a little bit weird right now, but um, hopefully if there is an expo, I'll see some of you guys there. So I just wanted to touch on that to, to make people aware that um, the expo right now is a go. For sure. And you'll be rocking your center ice card cast oh, t-shirt yeah. as well. So, Oh yeah, hundred percent. So if you see some weird looking dude wearing a center ice card cast t-shirt, be sure to stop Aaron and say hello. I'll take that. I'll take that. That's fine. <laughs> awesome. Well, I think that's pretty much all we have for this episode. Obviously, this was super fun, you know, talking a little bit about Allure, you know, which just came out. And of course, Metal Universe. I mean, it's such a, I don't know, polarizing is the right word because I think everyone just loves the product. I mean, it's such a, such an interesting product with so much awesome content within it. You know, you know, as you guys saw and heard tons of awesome inserts, everything looks amazing. So yeah, I mean, it was just super fun being able to open a box of it and, and just learn more about the product from the man himself who built the product. Obviously he knows a thing or two about it. Um, you know, we're always appreciative of Billy's time and his willingness to come on and talk about this stuff with us. So with that, please be sure to follow us on social media. We can be found on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Center Ice Cardcast and on Twitter at CenterACC. Please also be sure to subscribe to the show on your podcast platform of choice to make sure you never miss a future episode. Until next time on Centerized Cardcast, keep collecting those hockey cards.